Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover Warren Twenty here, and I'm here with this, with a movie review for a long-awaited, a long-awaited cut we all should have got. Before I get to what this cut is, I'm gonna explain how this all began. In 2017, we all know there was a superhero DC movie called Justice League. It had a notoriously bad production. So, want to know how this production all started? Well, before it had, Batman vs. Superman was released, was, was being filmed, and Warner Brothers saw Zack Snyder wanted to make it rated R. So they butchered Batman vs. Superman, edited out 30 minutes of it, made it all PG-13. And guess what they did? They released that version of Batman vs. Superman into theaters, and critics hated it. And despite making over $880 million worldwide at the box office, it was barely even profitable to them. Pfft. Well, sir, some right for trying to pander to kids. However, the cut of Batman vs. Superman Zack Snyder did get released on Blu-ray, and it was received much better from fans. And that, to me, is the true version of that film. But Batman vs. Superman's failure would really affect their next film, Suicide Squad, which received similar treatment, and was also hated by critics, but even if the extended edition of Suicide Squad were the version we got, the film would still suck. So then, Zack Snyder was back to direct Justice League, the follow-up to Batman vs. Superman. And while he was directing it, a tragic event happened. His daughter got killed in an accident. Very tragic. And so, he left direct directing duties to go mourn his daughter. But... Bad things happened. Did it stop the movie from being made? No. Warner Brothers decided to stab Zack Snyder in the back, take his movie, edit it out what he was doing, redo the whole movie, not even put any effort to it, basically half-assed the whole actual cut of Justice League. And you want to know who they bought in to finish the movie? Yep. Joss Whedon, the director who directed 2012's The Avengers and made the MCU a, and made the MCU more aware and really big. You think think maybe that wouldn't hurt the movie? It would probably it would probably give the DCU some hope. No, it just worsened their reputation because when the true when the actual cut of Justice League, the theatrical cut was released on its November 2017 release date. It was... Some critics found it an improvement just because of the lighter tone, but the lighter tone made fans of DC hate the f*** out of it. Yeah. It's... They went on to go call one of the worst super movies they've ever watched. It was such a bad box office performance, it did even worse than any other DC movie ever. It made only, like... 657 million worldwide. That uh, you're like, but movie lover, isn't that profitable? Well, it would be if your budget wasn't 300 million dollars. Yeah. You want to know how much you made back domestically? Only 229 million domestically. So for a 300 million budgeted film, ouch. That's really bad. Here's why it turned out to be so terrible. Everyone found out the lazy reshoots, the horribly paced CGI, the abysmal betrayal of Steppenwolf, who was basically just some generic bad guy, making Batman extremely unlikable and immature, obnoxious douchebag, who acts like Tony Stark, which he's not. Like Joss Whedon, just because what you did works with Marvel and worked with 2012, is not going to work with DC. Oh, and they made 
Plus, that cut makes Superman overpowered for no explanation, even though he was, like, dead for some bit of time, and somehow he has more powers, despite literally being dead for a while. Oh, and uh, there was a really another bad thing about Superman. During production of this, during the reshoots, Henry Cavill was busy shooting Mission Impossible Fallout, and his character needed to have a mustache for that role, and Paramount refused to let him shave it off, so you want to know what Warner Bros. did? Oh, they horribly CGI'd his mustache out. And pfft, that doesn't save anything. I mean, you can literally tell it's still there if you watch this opening scene where these kids try to interview Superman, and you just look at his face, and it just looks horrific. <sighs> anyway. So that's my review of the Josh Sweden cut. That cut gets a 0 out of 10. That's my ranking. So now let's get on with what we finally got. The Zack Snyder Cut. Around last year, during the miserable times of the pandemic, it was announced the Zack Snyder Cut was going to be finally released next year. Fans, including myself, were finally excited to see what was finally going to happen, what we should have got back in 2017. And so, it just got released this weekend. I finally found a way to stream it, despite not having HBO Max. And, it rocked! Yes! This was probably, for a director's cut dump to streaming, this is so far the best movie of 2021. Easily. This was probably the best movie of the DCU. And yes, I mean that, guys. This is easily the greatest film of the DCU, and we're going to get into why. Because, well, I'm not going to say the plot of the movie, guys, because you all know what the movie's about. Because we all know the movie's about Batman and Wonder Woman having to find these... and to find these other super... I to find these other supernatural beings, team them up, defend these three boxes from this... And this evil demon known as Steppenwolf. Yeah, we all know the movie's about. This was such an amazing movie. I don't even know why Warner Bros. was in such a hurry to get it done. They should have just waited for Snyder to return into his work. This version, unlike the Joss Whedon cut, a.k.a. the fake one, actually makes us connected with Superman, Batman, and Cyborg that, that maybe the story in the Snyderverse can be a thing now. Like, Zack Snyder actually knew how to homage those great stories of the past by blending a lot of them together here, and Zack Snyder was weaving elements of zero hour, which also involves the Flash into the story. It's why yeah, the Flash open one of Bruce Wayne's dreams, except it's not that it wasn't the goofy kid Flash that we met in this film. It's an older bearded Flash who warns Bruce Wayne that the cutest Superman is, well, well, slim, but he was, well, too soon, well. However, this, um, despite being the, despite still being a bit of a goof in this cut, Flash does not make any jokes during any fights. I mean, that was the problem with the Joss Whedon cut. The Joss Whedon cut made him a goof almost every second. Yeah, and even in the Rune Whedon cut of Justice League, there's a sort version of Cyborgs that relates to this. And Now... Now, for many years, I've been, I was kind of more of a Marvel Cinematic Universe, universe fan that, because in my opinion, it was kind of done, it had some definitely much better films than, than the deep, than TCU really did, no offense, guys, so, so now that story had elements running through several Avengers films, like Iron Man, and now Wander, now WandaVision, and now Falcon, and, Win and Winter Soldier, but, for Marvel Cinematic Universe, DCU, for Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Hawkman, now John Johns, these were around like before I was really a Marvel fan, those were my favorite heroes. And being referred to this great cut of this film and now And it's about time that the DC Extended Universe has been finally get put on track by the man who really who actually created it, Zack Snyder. And now don't get me wrong guys. I like Josh Wien's work with the Avengers, but at least did a good 
a job kickstarting that franchise, but as a DC director, he really sucks. And he really should have not been brought in to finish the movie. Because the Marvel stuff does not work with DC. DC is not a kiddie franchise. DC was technically always meant for adults. And another thing. When we saw the any Batman vs Superman, there was actually representation of Steppenwolf that actually looks menacing. We never knew who or what that was, but... So we thought... So we actually wanted... Couldn't wait to see what he was, but then the Josh Sweeney came out, cut came out, and guess what? He was just this guy dressed up in a costume that's like, I want to destroy the world because I'm evil. <sighs> Thankfully, that is not in this cut. This cut, he actually is a demon you can actually fear and actually has better developments. Because, yeah, it's not the story itself that's improved, even though the film itself is, like, longer, the parts... We have already, the parts we already saw in the weed, in the weed inversion, which were, were basically were ruined by weed and just trying to add humor to the story and that did not work. Snyder actually gets directly to the point with the scenes we already saw. But it's just his self, his style that he likes to tell, to let the tale tell itself regardless of how long it takes. Well, yeah, they're... There's, I know this film's still going to have some polarization or something, just like there was over Batman vs. Superman, but as far as myself, this is exactly how I suspected the film would be, so I was not surprised. And um, I enjoyed the ending of this movie, totally redesigned, and it made a lot more sense than this, and even the scenes depicting Luther's escape, the focus is not on Luther creating his own league of evil, it's just a business transaction, which is more like what Luther was in the comic books. He was a businessman, not some guy trying to recruit a team of his own. And, um, even though you're not a fan of DC, I'd give this film a chance. But watch Batman vs. Superman and then throw this in. But do not try to watch it all at once. This is a tale best absorbed in small sections. I don't have much words to define how good this movie is, but I will just just award Masterpiece to define it. It's active, fantastic work balancing every moment. Movie and Junkie XL scores may experience so much amazing to watch this movie. This is a much watched movie for every comic book movie nerd. So hopefully, and here's how I would rank it. I am going to give Zack Snyder's Justice League a 10 out of 10. All right. And that officially wraps up my review for ja for Zack Snyder's Justice League, aka the actual version. So what am I going to do after this? Well, I'm going to go out to my local Walmart, or or just any store that has a copy of the Josh Sweden cut, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to look for it, find it, and when I do, I'm going to grab it off the shelf, throw it on the ground, grab a hammer, and smash that fucker to pieces. Yeah. Now that we find out the true version... And then I'm going to go home, wait for whenever they do plan to release a Zack Snyder cut on DVD or Blu-ray in my area, and buy that version. Because that. Because this is the actual version. So to finish off this video, I will say, please restore the Snyderverse. And stop screwing up Zack Snyder's work. So... That'll be it for this video, guys. Thank you all for watching. And if you liked this and want to see more, then don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.